It sounds like Microsoft is about to make the Xbox Series S just a little bit more powerful for developers. You hear that little guy? You're gonna get some more megabytes of RAM to work with. Keep kicking butt. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about this story diving in right now. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when my content goes live. And let's hear it for the Xbox Series S, huh? The little the little game console that could. Uh, very happy for devs. Uh, they're going to be able to squeeze just a little bit more juice out of the console. This story comes our way via The Verge. And I forgot I'm wearing my headphones, but I am. All right, I'll take them off. There. People complain when I wear my headphones. <laughs> anyway, Microsoft gives Xbox Series S devs more memory to improve graphics performance. Now, this is coming because of a re because the developers basically requested it. Developers said, "Hey, the Xbox Series S is a little bit underpowered, and we want more more power to work with." So, Microsoft is making that happen. Uh, this comes from the June. Let me just bring this up here. The June Game Development Kit SDK is now available, and here are a few of the key improvements that we've made to the GDK, and many of these features are the direct result of developer requests. So because developers have been talking about wanting more memory for games, they are now going to get exactly that. And basically what you're not hearing right now is that a hundred that hundreds of additional megabytes of memory are now available in the SDK. This can improve graphics performance in memory constrained conditions. And they're also going to add improved performance for graphics allocations. Titles can take better advantage of recent memory enhancements. Now, if you watch Digital Foundry, like a lot of people do online, they've been talking about how there have been some constraints that they've been noticing with the Xbox Series S device. So it's nice to hear that they're able to make some adjustments and improve the conditions for developers. Uh, here's, here's what the Verge article actually said about those constraints. These memory constraints have been detailed by Digital Foundry with developers reportedly feeling some pain around optimizing games for the Xbox Series S. It's less the CPU and GPU power of the Xbox Series S, particularly as the Series S has the same CPU as the X, but more the memory situation. Microsoft's improvements, albeit small, could help reduce some of that friction around developing games for the Xbox Series S. So if you've noticed that your uh, Series S has been a little bit um, stuttery or just having issues with graphics, generally speaking, it sounds like those are going to be improved as much memory has been allocated for the unit. Hun what did they say? Hundreds of megabytes. Hundreds of additional megabytes of memory are now available in the SDK. Well, that is great news, but also we got some news from Michael Pachter about the Microsoft acquisition of Blizzard. Basically, he talked a bit about when he sees this coming to a close. Let's hear what he had to say over at Yahoo Finance. He was interviewed about this. I've cut together a clip really quick. Let's check it out. I can confidently state that the FTC has no legal basis to challenge this. What the FTC will likely do and should do is seek an, an agreement with Microsoft and enter into a consent decree uh, not block the merger, mm -hmm. not sue to block the merger. So watch October, because that's nine months after the deal. That's kind of when the FTC has to fish or cut bait. And if they don't sue by the end of October, watch Microsoft announce that they're going to close the deal by year end, and then we'll see what the FTC does. But I think this deal closes. I think it closes no later than January 15th, and I think the price is 95 bucks. hence my price target. So that's Michael Pachter detailing what he thinks is going to happen with the deal. And basically, he talks a bit about how uh, Lena Khan has an issue with big tech, how they tried to they sued like a tiny company called Within uh, to block one of the mergers. But because this deal like doesn't really make any sense and they're they only land like they're still not Tencent or Embracer Group size. Uh, I believe they would still be behind Sony even if this merger went through. It's going to be really hard to block. So what's more likely going to happen is a consent decree as um, 
Rick Hogue, who also talked to us recently, uh, sort of outlined. And, and the idea behind that would be that they have to agree that, yes, they're going to keep Call of Duty, for example, across multiple consoles, and they're not going to just raise the price of the game or actively work to reduce the quality of the product. So those are really, really important things. So what sort of effect will this have on the overall outcome of the Activision Blizzard deal? Well, we already believe, according to Pactor, he believes actually that it's going to close in January and we get an announcement soon. But he believes that Game Pass subscriptions could go uh, quite high. So closing at 95 bucks, it's currently trading at $85 the day of this recording. And he thinks that subscriptions could go from 25 million to 100 million subscribers, which would be insane. So let's hear from him on that. When they're done they are the fourth major game publisher you know in the us so so they're going to be giant and they're going to be in a position to actually support their subscription their future vision is let's eliminate the console let's use the cloud and let's deliver games to any any screen that you have and that potential market is three and a half billion people so i don't think they'll get that many subscribers but will they go from 25 million to 100 million yes so he seems pretty confident that they go from 25 to 100 million. And they've been sort of working towards this vision for a long time. Yes, there's still going to be a console market, of course. But as technology sort of catches up to everything else and we're able to stream most of the games that we play on our Samsung televisions, like the one one back there, it would be a new, newer model than the one that I have. Uh, but having experienced it, there's very little latency. And I think that PlayStation will also go that route once they get their, their streaming software configured for Samsung televisions. So it's not a surprise that he feels this way. I think 100 million, I think that's going to take a significant amount of time to get to, but the amount of revenue that they would generate should that happen uh, would be nuts. Uh, there was also the the topic about the, the merger and how that is going to affect stock price with many people predicting that the merger goes through and actually betting pretty big on it. These are analysts, and here's what it's also said over on Yahoo Finance. There is a relatively strong consensus. Oh, my mic might be a little hot from when I had Angel in here the other day. Go check out that video, by the way. Okay, that's, that's more where it normally is. Sorry if it was loud. Anyway, Yahoo Finance says, however, there is a relatively strong consensus that this deal should go through, said Kabat Henderson, a market strategist at Jones Stranding. Wall Street seems to agree with 26 of the 32 analysts covering the stock, pegging their 12-month price target at $95 at more or more. And over the last few days, you've actually seen the price of Activision Blizzard increase. And investor Warren Buffett has bought a stake of about 9.5% in Activision in a merger arbitrage bet. The 91-year-old billionaire has about seven decades of experience in arbitrage, including in technology companies. He bought shares of Red Hat Inc. before it was acquired by Inter International Business Machine Corps in 2019. And then um, last week, uh, Moffat Nathanson LLC actually thinks they're going to outperform. Though we'd push back on the notion that Microsoft will be closing on Activision any day now, we do see strong rationale for why it ultimately should, he wrote. So these are business people who know a lot more than I did. I do, and they are ultimately pointing to low, toward a closure of the deal. Unfortunately, Activision is up to a lot of its old tricks, including union busting. So here, oops. Here, here was a tweet that recently went up saying, it appears that Activision Blizzard's management has once again decided to take the low road by choosing to fight against our union in spite of the fact that 95% of us have signed union representation cards. Almost every time this company has the opportunity to begin to repair its reputation and demonstrate that it respects its workers, it declines to do so. Uh, just a real quick aside on that. I also don't understand why they're doing this. And, and somebody else tweeted this, but I absolutely agree. Why are they doing this when Microsoft has already said we're going to allow people to unionize if they want to unionize at the end of the day? It makes no sense that when there's this potential for the deal closing, 
So close. Why is Activision busting unions? It's really, really silly, especially with like these high price targets. Like, why are you bringing more negative press and like absconding yourself of any <laughs> of any sort of uh, wrongdoing? It's just it's it's a little little crazy and a little annoying. But anyway, those are some of the stories I want to talk about. So the big one was that the Xbox Series S is going to get more powerful. Basically, the long and the short of it is that developers are going to have more bits megabytes to work with with their memory allocations meaning you you should get a smoother gameplay experience and while i have you thank you so much for watching everybody hit that subscribe button hit that bell i hope you enjoyed this video update today i greatly appreciate you watching if you want to become a member memberships are turned on and a big shout out to new members returning members and everybody that supports this channel i do greatly appreciate you hit that join button right down there i'm gonna get out of here and i'll see you for the next one go check out that episode i did with angel i am curious what do you think of doing like a weekly recap show that would potentially air on fridays or it could air on saturdays or sundays i'm not sure when to air it but i would love to hear what you would think about me doing something like that. So let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna get out of here and I'll see you for the next one. I'm using a different layout so I can't find any of my buttons. Here, here's the outro. Bye for now, everybody.